Hello folks, this is Ayat Anaja from InspireTwice.com and today we are going to talk about the Infinix S5 Pro. So guys, let's just start with the unboxing for the Infinix S5 Pro. This is the official box for the same. This is one of the latest budget smartphones by Infinix and inside you get this smartphone and it has a very nice glossy back. You also get the normal charger for this one on the inside, SIM tray ejector tool, the micro USB cable for this one along with the documentation, warranty card, user manual and you also get a TPU curve for the smartphone along with the screen protector which is a plastic one. We had the smartphone in the green color. It looks pretty good and it also gets smudges easily at the back which which is really glossy. Talking further about the build and design for the smartphone, at the bottom you get the 3.5mm jack, the micro USB port along with the speaker grill and the microphone hole. And if you look closely on the right hand side, there's the power button and the volume rocker. The camera setup at the back does protrude out a little bit. And at the top, there's the pop-up camera mechanism. This is one of the cheapest smartphones to come with a pop-up camera mechanism and it comes with a dedicated micro SD card slot. So guys, talking further about the build and design, the display for the smartphone is a 6.53 inch display, which is a full HD plus display IPS LCD panel. The best thing about this one is that there's no punch hole, no notch whatsoever, and it's a full view display. On the inside, it comes with a MediaTek Helio P35 chipset, which is not really the most powerful chipset around. Out of the 64 GB, you get around 53 gigabytes free. It has almost every sensor required for a great smartphone experience. And it also comes with a 4000 mAh battery, which is okay for your day-to-day -day usage. But if you're a heavy gamer, you would find that the battery does not last long. It comes with a custom Android skin known as XOS and it does have some bloatware apps. Some of the apps can't even be disabled. It has a good feature known as Smart Panel which you can slide from the right hand side of the smartphone and access a lot of your shortcuts and different apps etc. The other good thing about this phone is that you can disable some of the bloatware apps but that's a pain for a lot of users and they shouldn't have been there in the first place but still they are an okay way to earn money for a lot of smartphone brands and make sure that their product is cheap. This smartphone is available only in a 464GB variant and out of the 4GB you get around 2.5GB RAM free a lot of times. It supports Cam2 API full but it would be tough to find a Gcam working version for a MediaTek chipset. Widevine support is on L3 level and apart from that if we talk about the bottom chin it's slightly big. Not really that huge but slightly big so you would notice it sometimes. But otherwise the display is fabulous and there's also a dedicated gaming mode present here which kicks in every time you are playing some games. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas on maximum possible settings does lag a little bit sometimes. You can play something like Call of Duty on low and high frame rate settings, low graphic quality settings, but then the gameplay was good enough and there was no lag whatsoever, no hiccup whatsoever. You can play games on this one for a long period of time, but in PUBG only smooth and medium settings were available and there was no extreme frame rate option or even ultra frame rate option and that was uh, really disappointing for a gamer like me. I felt that the overall gameplay was good enough and overall Overall experience is also good enough but the lack of good high frame rate setting does make sure that uh, it's not really that much enjoyable for a lot of people so that's something that I would have loved to see changed you can use something like GFX tool in order to have a better experience while playing something like PUBG the storage on the inside is EMMC 5.1 and that's not really as fast as UFS storage but good enough for the price point and if you talk about the Antutu benchmark score it's above 1 lakh which is a respectable score not really that bad the helio p35 is not really a hard hitting chipset but still it's okay to get your jobs done Talking about the camera setup on this one, it comes with a 48MP f1.8 primary camera sensor, a 2 megapixel depth sensor and apart from that, the front camera is a motorized pop-up 16MP sensor. The user interface etc is okay for a lot of people and it also comes with different modes, beauty mode, portrait mode. But what I found bad about this camera was the fact that the selfie camera for this one had some weird exposure issues and it was over brightening a lot of my selfies etc. And there's the AR shot mode which allows you to put in some random effects on your photos and apart from that overall the back camera is pretty good but still the front camera is something which needs a little bit of work and there are also display animation effects for when you open up the pop-up camera as you can see the front camera has some issues but the back camera is pretty good it also has a dedicated 48 megapixel mode and the front camera did have some issues with the exposure and was not able to nail the images properly that's something that i would really want to see fixed in some future OT updates but apart from that the overall general camera quality was pretty good for the smartphone especially considering the fact that this is a budget smartphone. 
It also comes with Bluetooth 5.0 support. There is a 3.5mm jack. There is FM radio on this one. Supports USB OTG. This smartphone is priced at around 9,999 for the 464GB variant. And if you really consider it in dollars, it's just around $130 or so. And that makes it a really lucrative device. So guys, this was it for this video. In case you like this one, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and do subscribe to Inspire to Rise for more awesome tech videos like this one. And guys, no matter what you do, stay inspired to rise.